Like we're totally live, man. Like I know, like, wow, this is like so groovy. Like we're stepping back in time to the 1980s. We're not going to talk like this the whole time, I promise. Well, maybe we will. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you probably could. You I, I could do it. But our guest today is JP. He is the owner, curator, of all things 80s. It is the 80s then and now.com website. There's a YouTube channel. Uh, and JP, I, we came across each other via Twitter and I was like, this guy is speaking my language. So <laughs> how are you doing, first of all? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm so honored to be with you guys. It, this is so exciting. <laughs> I well, welcome to welcome to uh, hashtag another round. Yeah, I, I forgot to introduce the show. Yeah, so you, you, so here's bad. the deal. I got to let everybody know that Kevin is such an 80s fan. Um, he, he's not quite the collector as JP. No, no. However... He has a really neat collection of WrestleMania memorabilia, uh, Smurfs, you name it. There's some things. Uh, honestly, JP, if you come to his house, you might find some from, some treasures that you could uh, take back. But you're, the reason you're so excited is because this this is this is you. This is like part of your DNA is this 80s stuff. I, yeah, I mean, there's something about, you know, and obviously we all grew up in that decade. So, I mean, there's that nostalgia factor. But JP, what got you started in collecting all this 80s stuff? And, and tell us also, you have quite a, an extensive collection. So start us off with that. Um, yeah, you know, it's so funny. The first interview I ever did was with my local news station. And they were like, JP, who are you? And they gave the camera. To, I'm like, I don't know who I am. So then they, <laughs> they, they shut off the camera and they're like, OK, I'll, I'll feed you something. Just say you're the unofficial world record holder of 80s memorabilia. And I'm like, oh, my God, can I keep that? <laughs> so that's how I promote myself from here on out for the branding. Um, so, yeah, I, I originally started to collect stuff as the result of, you know, mom and dad passing right in front of me. There was nothing I could do to stop it. And it really hit me hard emotionally. And I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. So I sort of turned to collecting. It just happened out of nowhere. I was at a flea market and I saw a Care Bear. I don't know where, where it is. Care Bear, <laughs> Care Bear is hiding on me. Um, actually, it's a bedtime bear in the box. And this woman was like, you know, would you like it? It's $10. Like, oh, my God. And then she had a whole bunch more behind her. And it was like 10 of them. And, and I bought them and I sat them home and I was just staring at them. And it made me feel um, like a full sense of security. It made me feel safe. It made me feel happy. And I would just look at it. And I'm like, you know what? Let's start collecting more toys. And then from the toys, it was board games, and then it was movies, VHS tapes, and school supplies and magazines. And I got to a point where the collection was so extensive, I thought, I have a record. I have a, a record. Let's apply to Guinness. And I sent it out thinking I was a shoe in And then they wrote me a denial letter. And it was like a standard denial letter. Like, they didn't really care who I was. Mm. And they said... Um, you know, thank you for applying. Unfortunately, your collection is too general. If you'd like, you can reapply using um, most, you know, specific Care Bears or most Garfield toys or G.I. Joe. And, and my thing is, it's not that I have the most of one particular item. It's that I have an extensive collection of everything from school supplies to fast food, you know. And I, I really, I don't like taking no for an answer. And I took to social media. And because now I think if I get a whole bunch of people angry with like torches and pitchforks, you know, <laughs> really pressuring Guinness, I think that I can do this. And um, so far, the turnout has been amazing. It's been amazing. All right. So basically, anybody that's watching moving forward at this part, you need to reach out to Guinness. You need to uh, tag JP. You need to tell them that we need to make this happen. And we're going to make it happen on another round. This that's is right. We got to make this happen for JP. And that was actually, it was a post that you had made uh, about all of this that kind of thought, well, this guy would be a perfect guest for the show because, as I mentioned, Tom and I both grew up in the 80s. We both have uh, collections of, of those fun memorabilia things. So you kind of started off with the Care Bears. Now, were you a Care Bears fan as a kid or, or was this just kind of the first thing that you kind of came upon? Yes, actually, it... Um... My, I remember that was one of the first toys because I was born in late 78. And I think the Care Bears came out in 83. I don't want to give the wrong thing. Then someone's going to troll me. Because um, I think the Care Bears came out earlier from American Greetings and Hallmark and all that. And then they expanded. But that was the first toy I remember personally. So for that connection, I remember mom buying that. 
And, you know, back then it was a big thing. You know, you don't buy your son Care Bears, bears, you know, here, give him a G.I. Joe, let him kill someone, you know. <laughs> um, so that was the first one that I identified with. Yeah. That's so awesome. throughout the show, we're going to get questions uh, down here. And one of the questions uh, we already have from Sam's Sam Banks is ultimate 80s movie chick. Who do you pick, JP? I would have to go with Phoebe Cates. Um, okay. From yeah. from what movie? You know, a lot of people would think Fast Times of Ridgemont High, but mm -hmm. I would probably give it to the more underrated, cheesy private school. Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. That's a, What do you think? So who was the girl that did, was it Kelly Burke that did Weird Science? Kelly LeBrock. Kelly LeBrock. That's mine. Sam, mine's Kelly LeBrock. So are we picking uh, like Crush or are we picking like... It just says Ultimate, ultimate 80s, 80s Movie chick. I mean, I would go Molly Ringwald. I'm well, going... Overall, oh, I thought you meant like gorgeous, I, like that one scene. That's what I kind of thought. I mean, oh, Molly God. Ringwald runs the gamut. I mean, you'd have to with Breakfast Club and, and Pretty in Pink. You just have to give them that. But I'm going with my girl. Well, I mean, I don't disagree with that, but I, you know. You better not. You wouldn't be a real we man should, of the we 80s. Should get, uh, we, should, we should get some bras on our head. and, and That's what we should have done. Yeah, we totally we should have done the episode with bras on our head. Yeah. Why did we not think that? <laughs> um, kind of on the same line, these are hard questions. Bill wants to know best 80s movie. Hmm. I had that come up in an interview and I was all over the place. And then I thought, let's keep it simple and just say a Christmas story with Peter Billingsley. There you go. Wow. It's so done over on TBS replay, but it that's nostalgia at its finest. You, I, 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 can, I wanted to live in that set. That's how cool it was. I don't, I don't, oh man, best 80s. That's like trying to pick a favorite kid. <laughs> Oh man! You'll never pick the middle one. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> I got to think about that one. So, JP, uh, you've got an extensive amount of of memorabilia, but one of the things I want to know, and, and because we're on my one two three cents uh, with Kevin's channel, is when it comes to wrestling memorabilia, what is the what did the eighties? What did WrestleMania or what did wrestling do to the eighties as far as all the toy? Like, how big is that industry? You know, back in the late 80s was when I got into WWF and I, the Rockers. To me, Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels, and, and I think it was like 90 or 91 when, when Michaels turned on Jannetty and kicked him through the uh, glass. And I, I should have had therapy for five years after that. That, <laughs> that broke up like, ah, oh, that hurt. Um, the, the toys and the figures were so amazing. And it was it was so much fun when I started to I, I grabbed as much wrestling stuff as I could. But it was, you know, it's like needles and haystacks in my house trying to find stuff. So, I mean, I grabbed a whole bunch of um, wrestling magazines that, that I got do. from um, Sorry, flea markets. And, you know, it was so funny because the. Um, the person that sold it to me was like a 90 year old woman. I'm like, what is she doing? What is she, this? I have this one. Hmm. Uh, you know, what is she doing wrestling? That's a whole nother story. But um, there were the magazines. And then I was um, telling you guys earlier, I loved there was the honeycomb. It was honeycomb cereal from 1989. And honeycomb. I did the giveaway where I had the poster that was still sealed inside and i could have kept it but i'm like you know what let me give it to the hardcore wrestling fans and i opened it up live and i was like okay who do you think i'm gonna open and you got 40 something year old people oh my god it's gotta be hulk hogan and and then you thought jake the snake and and yeah. then when i opened it up and it was ultimate warrior you know people were screaming in all capitals i want it need it you know and so i picked one person and then a few people cursed at me but <laughs> <laughs> they they loved it and it that's such a a, a great feeling to give back to, to everyone, whether it's a, a He-Man figure or a poster. Yeah. But, but to answer your question, wrestling was huge. Um, the LJN line did, did, did so, LD, LJN did such a great job with the um, WW superstars of wrestling. And, and um, unfortunately I think with the wrestling product, cause I watched Roar last night, I feel like the wrestlers have to do 20 times more to keep our attention. 
Whereas back in the eighties, they all look like your 40 year old uncle with, with the body, <laughs> you know, they all look like they weren't particularly muscular. They weren't particularly fit, but a, a drop kick, a leg lift was like, <gasps> you know, and, and now, you know, Seth Rollins and all, they, they have to really jump through ropes to get our attention. And that's unfortunate because we live in a digital age where if I make a video more than a minute, people, people, they got to go back to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got it. It's got to be entertaining. So uh, yeah. I don't want to cut Kevin off too much, but no. before we get too far into this, I want you to show highlight some of your 80s stuff. I want I want JP to see and well, see, tell us if you've got some of this stuff. You just mentioned the LJNs. This is uh, Andre, Rowdy Piper, George the Animal Steel, Hulk Hogan down here, and then the Macho Man, of course. So th this is just a handful that I grabbed before I left the house today. But mm -hmm. uh, I can still remember I was 12 years old. And uh, we were on vacation in Florida, and this was the very first wrestling figure I ever got. My brother got Superfly Jimmy Snooker, and I got Hulk Hogan. And I remember that, like, you, you talked about that nostalgia pop, if you will, when you saw that Care Bear. And when I saw that action figure for the first time, because this was obviously before the internet, and, and some friends had talked about, they've said, oh, WWF's going to start making toys. And I'm, no way. Like, up at... Up until then, I was using my Star Wars figures as wrestlers. I mean, I would do <laughs> and stuff with them. And so walking into that store uh, in Florida on vacation and seeing the Hulk Hogan figure there, I mean, it was like going crazy. And so then it, it quickly became a thing where every time we went to the store, I looked to see if they had another one and just adding to the collection. How much did they cost back then? I think they know? were about 8 or $9, I think. Did that seem like a lot back then? Well, yeah, because, you know. You get, if you had a five dollar allowance, yeah, I was going to say you get a lot, <laughs> three or four bucks a week on allowance, and then yeah, yeah. So, so JP, what are some of these worth now today? Some of these characters, um, the LJN. If you go on eBay or you go on, um, it sounds like Mercury, M E R C A R I. Uh, there's um, what are the other ones? Let it go apps. You'll get like it'll put like LJN lot. And you'll get like, you know, 10 of those figures and maybe it'll sell for like 100, 125. But then again, I look around to get like really good deals. And so, you know, it depends on the condition. It, once they're sealed, forget it. I mean, and if they AFA it, send it out and get it graded. Pfft, you know, we're talking rent money. We're talking mortgage money. Yeah. Or in my case, craft beer money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love your shirt. Well, you know, today is National Emoji Day. Oh, it so is? So that's why I wore this. I'm kind of anti emoji, but I this is the only emoji shirt I own, and it's my stages of drinking beer. There you go. So happy happy National Emoji Day, JP. And I'm so sad that you're going through beer withdrawal. That's your sixth <laughs> one. <laughs> I love it. So now you have. Uh, we were talking before we got into this uh, about the GoFundMe. Uh, page that you have right now. So talk to us a little bit about that and, and what, you know, you have this collection. Now, what is your uh, goal to do with it? What do you, what do you want others to know and, and learn mm -hmm. about your 80s collection? There, there is a difference between short-term goals and long-term goals. Short-term is that if you look on my website, uh, www, no, <laughs> 80s and 80s now.com, you'll see that I put samples of the first 20,000 items that I, I own and I brought I put them into oh. board games and toys and um, school supplies and fast food items and and women's items and men's items and cereal boxes and blah blah blah, but it took months and months to take photos of them. So that was the sample of the first twenty thousand. I still have another twenty thousand to upload on the wow. website, and um, I'm just one person. And the goal is also to do the next 500 products of videos. And so wow. I'd also like to, like if I'm doing a McDonald's um, pale display, uh, Happy Meal stuff, I'd like to go to the beach and film that as opposed to just putting it in my living room or bedroom. And there's travel expenses. And when I do giveaways, um, it's if someone wins and they're from Scotland, I'm like, oh, it's a lot of money to send it out. <laughs> um, but uh, so the goal was like, I don't know how much I put on there, but we're, we're at like 5%. It just started like five, 6% funded, which is great. The long-term goal is I have 
five Burger King crowns from the 80s, and I have it marked Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, website. I will put each one on and wear it once I become number one at that specific media. Um, you know, I, I had 5,000 followers on my Twitter last month, and I, I'm approaching 30,000. Um, wow. So that's a big jump. Wow. My, my Yeah, my Instagram is going to be hitting 20,000. It's steady. They, I love them. They're crazy wackadoos. Love Instagram people. Uh, the the, the um, uh, Facebook is like 100,000. The um, YouTube is pretty, you know, I don't want to knock YouTube because they'll, you know, but, <laughs> you know, you have to pay or, or I'm going to have to do videos of cute little rabbits um, or, or, you know, cats playing with yarn to get like with rainbows video. coming out of butts. Yeah, right. And so the long term goal is to be number one at all this. But throughout all of this, I feel like it's my job to inspire middle-aged people to wake up that inner child that has died many many years ago because society tells you you got to go to work you got to pay bills and you lose that innocence and and if i have to inspire people by throwing a a a, a he-man doll at you to get you to feel better um you know i'll do that the other thing i'd like to do besides get that record is do a museum in the tri-state area of New York city. And I looked it up. That is so much money you need. Um, it depends on the location, but that could cost millions of dollars. And believe it or not, a lot of the cost comes from like architectures, designers, because if you're going to post something or, or put it on a wall, like an art thing, you need lighting, you need special shelving. You can't just shove stuff at a wall because it'll look kind of tacky. So I do want a museum. I, I, I do want so many bigger things, but I have to keep small right now. And that is to build up the base and to make more content and showcase more of it and do a little, you know, short distance travel and get more and more people on board. You need to come to the Midwest, man. You need to come. You know what? You need to get people wanting you to come to their town to build, to have this whole extensive 80s memorabilia because that would be a huge draw for any community yeah i thought of like a traveling show for clowns but it would just be for 80s stuff <laughs> you could be the pt barnum of of 80s I, I've, always, I've always wanted to whip people yeah <laughs> <laughs> i, I want to whip kevin all the time but oh, you know that's crazy hey, yeah that's, that's a whole nother show that is another show <laughs> snm with kevin and tom that would go viral you'd be so <laughs> what would you say um, and, and again, we talked about picking your favorite child. Is there a, a particular find though that you made that you maybe remembered as a child and thought you'd never get a hold of it again, or something that really stood out to you that really brought back that that you know that sense of childhood, if you will? Yes, I originally thought um, when I was collecting this that I could never part with it. You know, this stuff means so much. But I'm at the point now where I can get rid of all this. But there are some things I will not part with, and that's the McDonald's trans lights, which you guys, um, let me show you one of them. So let's say you went to McDonald's and back then there was no digital screen. So these trans lights are mm -hmm. like, they're not paper. It's like a hard, I don't want to say plastic, but they would put these on top of the illuminated lighting yeah. And when you would go, you know, that's how you knew what they were giving out in the Happy Meal. And these were the um, Halloween um, trick-or-treat coupons. Yeah. Of course you do. That's why you're here. I, you know? I remember. I actually, so, but I totally forgot about those. Uh, this was when they had the plastic train caboose I, set. I don't remember those, though. Do you? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a few others. You might remember when they had the boats and floats yes. for the bathtub. Yeah. Uh, yes. I'll just show you like one more. Um when I think in 85, 86 they did the Lego set. Okay. Yeah. So but wow. I think my ultimate favorite would be the McDonald's McDonald Land cookies. They had oh. the big display and I have yes. it, but I have it in storage. Um and it came with the shoot. So when the you'd oh, buy wow. a box of cookies and pull it out, it would drop down. And there's like 20 boxes still unopened of cookies. And I heard that Road they, trip. I heard that they're still they don't expire. So I would oh, probably yeah. want to try one. 
<laughs> that is awesome. They're yeah. like uh, they're like mills. They're MREs for the military. They're there mills ready to eat. They you can eat the nuclear explosion. You can still eat them. Still yeah. eat Chernobyl. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so million million dollar question for me. How do you afford all this? Like, what is your day job? How do you make this all happen? Because this stuff can't come cheap. Uh, it's a combination. I was a nursing home director for seven years. And then I was in a free car accident in Manhattan. I was picking up a friend and I was waiting for her to get out of the subway station. And I was in my car parked and I heard a loud explosion and I didn't know what it was. And then within a second, I just flew forward and a car <laughs> drove into a cab and both of them drove into me when mm -hmm. I was um, when I was in the car. And so oh. I sustained neck and, and spine um, damage. But then three weeks later, I was coming home from physical therapy and I was two blocks away from my house in the car. And um, this woman ran a red light, went right into me on my side. And I was wearing my seatbelt and my rear end left from the impact, left the seat and I flew to the left and it tore out the rotator cuff. And then I had more disc damage to my neck and spine. Oh. And, um, you know, I was given some money in both cases, but um, I used a lot of that. I had 12 surgeries to the neck and the spine, and I had so much downtime where I was in bed a lot. And um, I didn't move around much, but I did go on eBay and I did go on a few sites. And I'm like, oh, look at that. You know, I can get a, you know, a, a, a 1986 baseball, you know, unopened box of whatever for 10 bucks and buy it and get it shipped. And there was so much downtime, like over two years that it just started wow. to collect and more. So, so to answer your question, it was a combination of, of healthcare, a career in healthcare and, um, blood money. I refer to that as blood money. And I, I actually proudly spent a lot of that blood money on this stuff. So do you have like a, an estimated value? Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing you're insured. I hope you're insured. Oh but God. Yeah. Yeah. But do you have an estimated value of what this collection is? I honestly wouldn't even know if I priced everything at a dollar, which it's not. Everything can probably sell for five dollars, ten dollars. Like you know, the the Castle Grayskull set can probably go for, you know, oh. one fifty, two hundred, two fifty. Um, you know, the the Transformer gift sets of of Devastator. You know, there, there's stuff that's like high end. The Karate Kid Command Center. Uh, those are like bigger pieces, uh, you know, like 400 Nintendo games and that stuff can sell for a lot. And if I kept it conservative, I would probably say maybe several hundred thousand. God, I, I honestly think you probably had almost half a million. Wow. Well, there's my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's yeah. awesome. I just, I, I, I'm in awe. The website, the website yeah. is very well done and, and organized. Uh, the GoFundMe page is up as well, where people can can make those contributions. It's just, yeah, I. It's so. How do you know all this stuff? Like you're spouting. It all. Okay, Kevin is. I tell him he's my Google of wrestling. He knows wrestling shows and people, and he's like just boom, boom. But you've got almost forty thousand items, yeah. and you know, like it seems like you know all forty thousand. You have to be a jack of all trades for this. Like, I need to know my, um, you know, my my VHS reference. I need to know my movie reference, my record reference. I need to know when uh, an album came out, how far they did on the charts. I need to know the order in which the Happy Meal boxes came out. Because I think I own every Happy Meal box from 1980 to 1989. Um, I have to know my cereal box references oh, yeah. of which mascots came out in what order. Um, but I don't think I'm a particular um, expert. I, I'd like to believe I'm a jack of all trades, you know, master of none. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, eventually someone was like, you should be an archaeologist or historian, which I thought was pretty, was just pretty rad, you know, because I will watch other 80s um, sites like my competition. And I'll notice that some of them are just basically Googling images or they're going on YouTube and they're like, who remembers this? And, you know, they have such a bigger following than I do. And I'm just sitting there like, but I own it, you know, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, I, I have learned a lot 
through this stuff of, you know, Avon catalogs and, and you guys remember choose your own adventure books. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Love those. Yeah. I really want them to bring back something. I would love to do an app where we can slide left to right and pick stories and stuff. And, but again, to answer your question, I've had to learn a lot from this stuff. And <laughs> I was on my back for two years, so I had time to learn this. <laughs> I don't know about you, Kevin, but I have like millions of questions. Like I want to say, do you have this? Do you get that all the time? Like people are like, do you have this? Do you have this? Yes, yes I do. Uh, I get it a lot. And what I really like is when someone will show me a photo of something and they're like, can you help me with this? I don't know what it is. And there were a few times I was stumped. And some of those times they wow. were showing me something from the 70s or 90s. And I was so angry at them because I'm like, <laughs> you know, I tell you, I don't know much prior to January 1st, 1980. And I don't know much or I don't want to know anything past December 31st, 1989. And so when people are like, do you know this? And I'm like, OK, that's SpongeBob. That has nothing to do. <laughs> OK, even I know that. What yeah. are you doing here, folks? <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm going to ask one, do you have this? Because it was one of, it was early on, my grandmother bought this for me. It was, um, it was a Pac-Man game. It was round. It was yellow. It looked like Pac-Man, had the green screen. You basically, it was travel. It had like the green screen, but you could play Pac-Man, but it was very basic. Hmm. Do you, do you remember anything like that? You're not, you're not referring to the tabletop one. You're referring no. to a smaller like, yeah. round. It was round, looked a little bit like a Pac-Man. It was up. The screen and it was had green. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I have that. Please. See, <laughs> that's awesome. I I think I got carpal tunnel in my thumbs from playing that. So it, that was the early time when my mom and my dad would say, "You need to put that down. You've been playing that too long." And I remember <laughs> that. Like that's way before all the other stuff. But I had that. I loved that game. Yeah. And now your wife says you need to put your phone down. <laughs> you need to put your phone down, right? So what's your Oh man, gosh, I, you know, there's so much that I think back to one thing that, um, I had as a kid and I I've saved everything, but for some reason I let these go and it was the Astro Snicks from McDonald's. Remember those in the happy meals? Yeah. Uh Cause I was a huge Smurf fan. So the Astro Snicks were kind of like the green alien forms of Smurf, but they were McDonald's like Snorks. Yeah, um, they were like. I have, the, I have the translite. Um, oh, okay. And I, have, and I have every Happy Meal box, so I'm sure one of the. And I have the figurines too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that came out in '86, I think. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I remember. I remember those very, very vividly having them. But again, I don't know whatever you know. And, and I'm curious, that I don't know if there's any link to Smurfs, because that looks like a ripoff a little bit. There is some yeah. similarities there. And I yeah. don't know if there's a connection from Peyo, P-E-Y-O, if, yeah. if they had anything to do with it. I don't know. I didn't look that up. But Interesting. All right. What's your white well? JP, what's the one thing that you've been looking for, but you haven't found yet? My sanity? No, no, no. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, wow. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. My sister used to go to um, get breakfast in grade school at PS 108 here in the Bronx. And she would, if, if you went and, and got breakfast, they'd give you a stamp. And it was from the Mickey Mouse Breakfast Club. And they gave everyone that ate breakfast there a little booklet. And then there were a little stamp. So uh, it talked about health and drinking, you know, milk and stronger bones. By the way, there's no that was a, a fake advertising campaign. Milk does not strengthen bones, according to a lot of people, whatever. But there are these stamps that I've been trying to find so badly. The best I can get was the Breakfast Club poster. But these little stamps have been that's that's like you're really bothering me, God. Like, I can't <laughs> believe I cannot find that. Like, no one wow. saved them. I don't know. All right, so we've got some questions. We'll try to go through these really quick. Um, sure. that, this first off, we have best '80s band. That I'm gonna go with the first thing that pops in my mind: Poison, just because of the the glam rock in the '80s. Oh, um, I, I'm a sucker for ballads and the heart. I, I love heart. Oh. Um, bon Jovi. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can't really pick one because yeah, I, know, and I have a whole bunch of um, 80s celebrities following me on some of my medias 
And oh, no. um, it's so funny because I used to listen to, um, okay, I'm, I just wanted to give you a quick timeline on this. I posted, um, the, the Bronx Times reporter um, did an article about me. And then a week later, the New York Post did an article of me. And on page three, wow. it was crazy. Oh, wow. Oh, that's on, awesome. On, on page three. I'm like, oh, the only ones that beat me that day was Victoria's Secret model and the mafia. So nice. that was like. Victoria's Secret's model. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay yeah, to all be. All right, fine. You know, but from there, um, one of the bands that I used to listen to, Nova Rex, and I don't have it in front of me. They sent me um, their shirts, autographed CDs. I oh, spoke wow. with them. It was just amazing. And then from there, um, uh, uh, was it uh, Zach Gallagher from Gremlins? Um, yeah. John Parr, he sang um, Man of Motion, St. Elmo's Fire. Um, Jody Watley, Lisa Lisa Cold Jam. Uh, uh, it's, oh. it's just. Oh. Love that Lisa. Go Lisa. for it. Go for it. <laughs> Love Lisa yeah. Cold Jam. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Favorite eighties TV show. I'm going with Alf. I loved Alf in the eighties. I had a very dysfunctional family growing up and I took an online quiz and it said, which eighties uh, sitcom is your family most like? And it's my favorite married with children. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Although my mother worked, you know, not like, <laughs> but yeah. It's, it, I would say the first four seasons of Married with Children. Once Steve left, Jefferson did a good job, but no. And at that as that's a show I'd like to see come back because oh, those yeah. kids would still be milking Al for all he's worth. Oh, he's working yeah. at the shoe store. He has no money. She's not working. It's perfect. It's perfect. It is. What would be yours? Uh, I would probably go probably the Golden Girls. I, I knew it. I, I <laughs> knew it was going to be Golden Girls. I knew it. Yeah. I should have That's predicted. one of the only shows I think that did not jump the shark. It got better yeah. with the seasons yeah. as opposed to, you know. Um, next question. Do you have any Kiss Band toys? Would that be 80s? There were there were there was a lot of merchandise in the eighties. Um, some people thought they sold out. I don't think so. <laughs> um, again, I would have to look in the next twenty thousand of storage. I wouldn't know because you would ask me if I had the Stretch Armstrong. I wouldn't even know. Okay. Um, if let me ask this one. Sam has a question. If you die, do you have someone you've already planned on leaving this to? That's actually a good question. That that is because this would take over like a state territory. <laughs> and um, I don't want to say I've identified who it is. I don't want to say who it is because if someone knocks me off on purpose, right, right, right. Don't do that. Know, they'll know who to go to. So this is going to be hush hush, and the person doesn't even know it. But I eventually, I do <laughs> want to. Yeah, I do want to update the will and stuff. Okay, yeah. so you have a plan. That's good. I do. I do. Um, Carl says he needs to see the McDonald's high chair I found. Yeah, I saw uh, Carl uh, is a friend of ours and, and has had posted on Instagram. He found the old school uh, high chairs that they had with the little Ronald McDonald characters on yeah. the, the tray and whatnot. That's wild. So, yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and, and just to cut you off there. Um, no, no. To cut you off there. Not to cut you off there. <laughs> I'm, I'm from the Bronx. I'm rude. Okay. It's all good. Uh, there are certain things I would have loved to buy, but because of space constraints, uh, things like bicycles, huffy bikes and stuff. And, oh. and someone sold a McDonald's um, playground, all the stuff, the, the, the slides and the teeter top, oh, whatever. Wow. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have to have it. And I'm like, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. So I walked away, you know, crying, but whatever. Well, I have to say something before, because I know we're going to have to wrap up. But, you know, it's it's kind of a known fact that Kevin is my BFF. He's, he's my buddy. But before there was Kevin, <laughs> there was my buddy. Yeah. My <laughs> buddy, my, my buddy, buddy, wherever my he buddy. goes, oh, well. I go, my buddy. My sure. buddy. There you go. I, I just it. posted kid sister yesterday. That's so weird. <laughs> wow. It was meant to be. Yeah. But I, you know, kind of, I mean, a little bit, there's a little bit of resemblance. 
this hair is much grayer than this hair. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little, a little. You know, well, I, was, I was saying that we live in such um, troubling times right now where, where everyone is just fighting with each other. Yeah. Uh, politically, socially, all this other stuff. And I have, you know, pro-Trump. I have anti-Trump. I have Christian conservatives. I have atheists. I have 10-year-olds, 80-year-olds, which is why I'm not cursing a lot. Um, if it ta- you know, this project is like one of the few things where people cease fire and have this like human experience where everyone just shares something in common. And, and that makes this all worthwhile, that people are not Amen. fighting with each other and there's no social media animosity. I only had to block one person. <laughs> in all these months crazy like, uh, b- oh. accusing me of racism for the california raisins i don't know where that came from <laughs> oh, but, yeah but this 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 project means so much more than just toys it's it's a part of our history and it's great because my target audience is people like you in their 30s and 40s but people in their 50s and 60s and, and 70s were middle-aged back in the 80s so there's so much stuff for them and yeah. then kids and teenagers are being raised by 80s babies and this is a great opportunity for them to finally see something that mom and dad owned and young people like 80s stuff it's it's cool it's neon it's bright you know so this is this is that's how i know this is going to be a long-term project for me good for you and i you know what i i actually like the underlying meaning and message behind this you're just not a guy with toys you're really trying to unite people bring people together and and give that and i think Mm -hmm. the reality is that yeah, you might not have those numbers yet to wear the crowns, but I have no doubt. I think JP, and when you do, if you get there, please let us know. When you get even bigger, don't forget us little people, I, okay? I always said that the people that are with you from the very beginning are the ones you need to bring with you. And Absolutely. so I am keeping a mental – actually, I'm keeping a, a book of all the people that have responded positively. And I remember the celebrities and the other people that – I guess they they read me like, oh, can you check me out or whatever? They read it, never responded. I'm keeping a mind of them, too, because I feel like when you are at your lowest, that's how you know who's there for you. And Absolutely. whether whether it's this particular uh, it's one, two, three with you guys or it's um, the New York Post. I, I am mindful and appreciative of, of, of everyone. I really am. You want to wrap it up? Absolutely. JP, uh, tell us one more time. It is 80sthenandnow.com, right? Yes. You can also catch me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Which uh, we posted the links to all those in this as uh, for the Facebook Live so everybody can go. And please Mm -hmm. follow him. Check him out. Uh, Very positive. Very just fun. And uh, we are so honored to have you a part of uh, another round with uh, Tom and Kevin. Great. You guys make such a great duo. (laughs) <laughs> you know, well, I, we've I, been, I had we've been told that where, where there were two people running it, and I the the chemistry was so off. I wanted to smack both of them. Yours <laughs> is very playful and fun. It's eighties. It's so eighties. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, man. Have a great day. It's great. Good times. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. All right, you're still on.